Well, how many know to God be the glory? We're careful to give all the glory to our great God. Thank you. Thank you, every campus. Thank you, every dream teamer. Thank you for making a huge impact in a crazy year. God used you. But can I tell you, we are just getting started. God's going to do more in 2020, my, 2021. My word this year is big. God is going to do big through his church. He's going to do big through Easter. Here's what I want to do. I believe they gave you handouts on the way in. Everybody got the handouts. Everybody got the handouts. If you didn't, just lift your hand, and the team will bring you a handout at all the locations. It's just If you didn't get a handout, lift your hand. I see your hand. Come on, team. I need you to serve them. Just leave your hand uh, up, and they'll get you a handout right there. Here's some folks down front here. Just sprint on up here and get them a handout. I got business to do, and I need you with a handout today. At every campus, just lift your hand. Lift your hand, Northwest. Lift your, lift your hand, Midwest City. Lift your hand, Indianapolis. Lift your hand if you need a handout, and we're going to get one to you. Now, this handout is not for you to put your bubble gum in. Come on, get your pen ready. Take some notes today. Here's what I want to talk to you about. I want to piggyback on today's message, and I want to talk to you about effectively reaching lost people. But I want to talk to you today was about, it was for the church. It was for the Christians. It was for our church family. Tonight is for our leaders. It's for the dream team, and I want to prepare you to reach lost people. And I want us to look at Luke chapter 19 and verse number 1. There will be fill in the blanks that you can fill in the blanks and take this teaching home today. The scripture says this in Luke chapter 19, verse 1. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. Now understand this about Zacchaeus, and, and, and this will help you understand what's getting ready to happen Easter weekend and beyond. Zacchaeus was far from God. Zacchaeus was not serving God. He was a tax collector and he was cheating people out of money. And Jesus was so practical in how he reached someone who was far from God. And what we're going to do Easter weekend is we're just going to practically reach people with the love of Jesus Christ. And here's what I want to do. I want to prepare our leaders I want to prepare our, our dream team on how do we effectively, practical, practically reach lost people with the love of God Easter weekend and beyond. This morning was for the entire church family. This is for you as a leader. Jesus, from this portion of scripture with Zacchaeus, he gives us five steps to effectively reaching lost people. I want to give you five steps to effectively reaching lost people. This is going to be practical. It's going to put the cookies on the bottom shelf. It's going to equip you with tools to reach people as they come through our doors. Let me pause and just say this. For those of you that are back for the first time at one of our campuses or you haven't been in a long time, thank you for being at the Dream Team Rally. It means the world to me and Tiffany, and we're so glad to have you back tonight. Here we go. Point number one is this. Take some good notes. Take some good notes. Every service, be looking for those who need Jesus. How do you effectively and practically reach the lost people? Every service, be looking for those who need Jesus. Luke, Luke chapter 19, verse 5, it goes on to say, when Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Now, now, I want you to understand this. There was a crowd with Jesus, and Jesus didn't allow the crowd to stop him from noticing Zacchaeus. Jesus always was looking. He was on the lookout for hurting people. He was on the lookout for broken people, and Jesus looked up, and he saw Zacchaeus. Jesus had a, such a heart for hurting people and broken people and, and lost people, and you and I, we must constantly be on the lookout for people 
who are coming through our doors who are far from God. Let me say it to you like this, church. We must be a there you are church instead of a here I am church. We must be a there you are church instead of a here I am church. And church family leaders, hear my heart tonight. Our natural gravitational pull is to make church all about us. To turn inward. To be a here I am church. I want to really help you tonight. Let me give you four things there you are churches deeply believe. Four things there you are churches deeply believe. Number one is this. Every service is someone's first service. Every service. Every Sunday, every Wednesday in Epic is someone's first service. And we can't treat outsiders like they're insiders. It was a few weeks ago, I was at a college speaking at this particular college. And, and when I arrived, they, they sent, me, sent me notes on where to park. And they told me, when you arrive to the college, park in the parking deck, and then meet us in the kids' lobby. Well, the problem was, I didn't know where the parking deck was, nor the kids' lobby. They were talking to me as though I was an insider, but I was an outsider. And I'm afraid if we're not careful, people are walking into our doors every Sunday and we're treating them like an outsider. Like, you don't know where to go? You don't know where the bathroom is? You don't know where the auditor is? What's wrong with you? Just get your kids checked in. And they're going, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. And sometimes our head is not on a swivel looking for people far from God, looking for new people who don't know where to go. We get so busy talking to one another and, and looking out for one another and just hanging with one another, we're not looking out for people walking through our doors who are far from God. And every service is someone's first service. And church, here's what I want us to understand secondly, and that, that is this. I must be prepared to minister to people before they arrive. I must be prepared to minister to people before they arrive. I want to encourage your heart with this. Every single Sunday, every single Wednesday, you need to get filled up with Jesus so when you get to church, you can give out Jesus. Every Sunday, every Wednesday. You know, I don't have the opportunity and luxury to come to church and be dragging. Say, well, you know what, I'm sorry. I'm not going to preach very good because I'm just, it's been a tough week. It's like, no, I got to get prayed up. There are new people here. There are people that need hope. They're, they're broken. They're looking for answers. And I've got to be on my A game. I need Jesus. And so i got to be prayed up. i got to be ready every single Sunday in the parking lot, every single Wednesday in the, in, in the youth services, every single service, people need the hope of Jesus Christ. Now, in my notes, I put four things, but it's three things. What do your notes say? Three things or four things? Three things? Well, I think I, I, think I got that wrong. Amen. So, anyways, it's three things. Here's the third one. I have to share the vision of reaching lost people with my team members every week. Don't miss this. I, you have to own this dream team. You have to share the vision of reaching lost people with your team members every single week. Let me encourage you with this. Not only do you need to be filled up with Jesus to give out every week, but every week, would you just own, I'm not going to take a Sunday or a Wednesday off of sharing with the dream team with my team members, why we're doing what we're doing. So many people forget why they are serving. There are hurting people coming every week, broken people, lost people. And we got to be reminded Jesus changes lives. You're not just changing a diaper. You are allowing a mom and dad to come into the service and hear the good news of Christ. You're helping a kid experience. Can I tell you, they sense something when they're experiencing the love of God. When they come to church and sitting in our nurseries and hearing the kids' lessons, you're, you're not just trying to break out with teenagers in a small group just to hang out and say, I'm wasting my time. No, you're, inv you're investing into world changers. You're not just in the parking lot greeting. People decide in the first five minutes if they're coming back to a church or not just by how somebody waved at them and smiled at them and treated them. It matters. We got to remind the dream team. Listen, I'm telling you, the people you're serving to, some of them have forgotten why they're serving. 
and they'll get filled up this week but 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 our serving tank is a lot like a gas tank it starts to get down to half full and it starts to get down to empty and somebody's not reminding each other this is why we're here this is why we're here this is why we're here is to see more changed lives I want you to own that with me that you remind your team member we need you serving on Easter because it's about more changed lives we need you serving after Easter because people are coming back we need you to help us see more changed lives we need you here on Mother's Day for the 19 year anniversary can you believe we're going to be 19 years old on Mother's Day 19 years old and we're just getting started it's going to be a big day for our church we need you serving because it's about more changed lives we're going to kick off a series back to the movies one of our most popular series of the year starting Memorial Day weekend when we show the movie clips and share about Jesus and have popcorn and soda and we need you here why because people need the hope of Jesus Christ and what you do matters matters number two is this number two is this every service you have to initiate conversations with new people dream team you're my leaders every service you have to initiate conversations with new people let's learn let's learn this from Jesus in Luke chapter 19 verse 5 when Jesus came by he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name Zacchaeus I, I want you to notice this Jesus initiated the conversation with Zach. There you are. You're blessing me. I know every campus right now, you're turning those papers. I love to hear that noise. Come on, Midwest City. Oh, you're following with your pastor tonight. Here's what I want you to catch. There you are, churches. Don't just deeply believe things. They deeply do things to reach lost people. Now, right here, three things. Here's a blank. There you are, churches consistently do. We don't just believe things. We do things. Three things. There you are. Churches consistently do. Here it goes. They initiate a conversation and connection with as many new people as possible. They don't wait. When you come to church on Sundays and Wednesdays, is your head on a swivel for new people? Are you initiating conversation? I need you to. I need you to be initiated. I need you reaching out. I need you looking for new people who are confused and don't know where to go. I need, I need you that we've got to initiate. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, he initiated the conversation. And when you initiate the conversation, learn about them. Ask them questions. I'm going to give you more on this in just a few moments. But don't spend your time talking about you. Spend your time getting to know them. Here, here's, here's, here's the second thing about three things there you are churches consistently do. And that is they love people right where they are. So remember this, team. Love people. Don't judge people. It's okay for people to come to our church not okay. I just want to remind you, I say this frequently, but you need to hear it again, and that is this. We are a hospital, not a country club. We are here for hurting people. We're here for broken people. We're here conf conf for confused people. You come just like you are. And we believe if we can get you in the presence of God and hearing the word of God and worshiping in a prayer where the anointing is moving, that Jesus Christ is going to eventually grab a hold of your life and change your life. But we're going to love you just like you are. Here's the third thing. Here's the third thing. Third things there you are, church is consistently to do. Number one, initiate conversation and connection. Number two, love people right where they are. Number three, they memorize people's names and call them by name. Did you catch Jesus? He said, he didn't say, hey man, come here. He said, no, Zacchaeus, come here. There's something powerful when you call people by name. And I want to encourage our dream team, memorize as many names as possible Make it a goal. I've memorized everybody's name up to a thousand people in our church. Some of you remember that coming in. I, I, knew, I knew everyone's name. Why? I worked at it. I knew how powerful it was if I could call you by name. I knew how powerful. And I can't do that by myself. I got to equip you to do that. Would you memorize those parents' names checking in their children? Would you memorize people's names that come in and out of your door? Would you help memorize people's names sitting in your section every Sunday and you see somebody new? Don't just, just let them sit there. Remember, what's your name? Get to know their name, their kids, get kids' names, and call them by name. It'll make such a difference in reaching people for Jesus. Here's the third thing. Here's the third thing I want you to see. Every service, give people clear next steps. Every service dream team, 
be, be giving people clear next steps. Notice this in Luke chapter 19, verse 5. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, notice this, notice this next step. Come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Jesus gave Zach his next step. Come down from that tree. I'm coming to your house today. Notice this. There you are, churches. Give people clear next steps. I want to arm you up. I want to prepare you as our leaders. Let me right here in your notes. Let me give you five clear next steps to give people on Easter and after Easter. Five clear next steps. Here they go. The first next step is just attend next Sunday. When you're talking to people, help them to attend the next Sunday. Let me say this to our dream team as our leaders. I don't just need you Easter weekend. So many dream teamers after Easter weekend, they're like, woo-wee, we serve four services. Praise the Lord. I'm taking it off. I need you. Like if you take off everything I'm training you to do, we can't even do it because you're at the house. Come on, I, I need you here after Easter. I need, I, need, I, need you, I need you serving. I, I need you engaged. I need you here after Easter because we got to get people back after Easter. And so many people are now coming back to church uh, do, do, during this pandemic over a year. I'm, seeing, I'm meeting people every Sunday, a part of our own church. I'm seeing every Sunday starting to come back. And lost people are coming. Get them back. April 11th, we begin the Mixed Up series, Ingredients to Healthy Relationships. Encourage them, man. We all need help in our relationships. April the 11th, the Sunday after Easter, is our kids series is on relationship. On Wednesday, uh, the, the Wednesday after April the 11th, our youth ministry is beginning a series on relationships. On April the 11th, in the kids ministry, every kid is going to get free ice cream. I think I might be a kid that day. But I'm just saying, help get people back so that they can go on a spiritual journey. Number two is this. Get people baptized next Sunday. So you just want to help people know you gave your life to Christ. Man, you ought to get water baptized. It's a clear next step. April the 11th, we haven't baptized in over a year. Give a clear next step. Here's a third one. Attend growth track on April the 11th. Just, just attend growth track. It, that, that, that's a great next step. Just give them that clear next step. Here's a fourth one. Attend your small group. Now, if you don't attend a small group, get in a small group so that you can t- invite people to your small group. You're in a small group, attend, get them to attend your small group. Here's something that we all need to memorize, and that is this. It's in your notes for fill in the blank. Every person needs a friend and a job. If they're going to stick in our church and go on a spiritual journey, every person needs a friend and a job. Or let me say it like this, next blank. Everybody needs to be needed and known. Everybody has that desire. That's why we got to get people on the dream team because they need to be they need to be needed. They they need a job. They they need to be contributing to building the kingdom of God. And then everybody needs to be known. Everybody doesn't need to know everybody's name, but but everybody needs somebody to know their name. So important. Everybody needs a free. You got to help me with that. We got to memorize names. We got to help people get plugged into the dream team. We got to help them be known and missed. We got to help them. Here's the fifth thing. There'll be some people that attend our campus on Easter, attend one of the campuses. They're already a Christian. And so help them attend deeper night. They want extended worship. They want to take communion. We're, we're going to have communion the first Wednesday night in April. We're going to have extended worship. It's going to be a powerful night. That's a great next step for people that are already Christians who want to go deeper. Now, let me help you here. Let me give you five questions. Now, I gave you a handout because I'm giving you a lot of information. I need you to go home and do your homework and study this so that you can apply it Easter week and beyond. Matter of fact, every Sunday, every Saturday before you come to church, just kind of glance over this. Just read over it again so you just re- remember how can I effectively Reach lost people with my church family. Here's five questions you can ask to help people take their next step. I just gave you the next steps, but let me just teach you real quick on five questions you can ask people to help them take their next step. Question one, how long have you been attending? It's a great initial question. I ask people that all the time. Now, don't say, have you been attending a year? They'll be like, no, I've been attending 10. You'll know me by now. What's wrong? And the people are offended. So now the right question is, how long have you been attending? That's my first Sunday. Well, I've been coming to 10 years. Well, that's awesome. I've been coming to five years. So how long have you been attending? It's a great initial question when you're talking to someone new. Here's the second great question. How did you hear about people's church? 
I'm just asking get to know you questions. And usually they'll say something and allow me to ask a follow-up question. Just getting to know them. Hey, how long have you been attending People Church? And they'll say some stuff. It'll be a good conversation starter. And, and when that kind of conversation kind of wears down, I'll say, well, how'd you hear about the church? And they'll tell me, and that'll get us another conversation. And th- th- then I may be able to, as the conversation is going on, it may be a natural segment for me to go, man, have you ever been to Growth Track? You, you ought to get plugged in the growth track it's a great way to learn more about the church and more about the vision and get plugged in or maybe it's someone that's man there are they don't want to jump on the team have, have, you, have you been on the dream team you, you've been coming for maybe you think they're new but they've been coming for six months and you didn't know so have you ever joined the dream team because the purpose of growth track is not just for information it's to help people take their next step to get on the dream team because God wants to use them to make a difference so we're just asking that question it's a great question and then another great question is have you got connected in a small group have you gotten connected in a small group? And it's really helpful if you're already in a small group and you can invite them to your small group. Those are five questions you can ask to help people take their next step. Remember this, how long have you been attending? And the second one, how did you hear about people? So there's two very important questions just to engage in conversation with a new person. Here we go, point number four. Point number four, we're looking, look, we're looking at effective ways to reach lost people. Every service, you must aggressively build relationships with new people. Every service, you must aggressively build relationships with new people. Let me break this down from you from, from, from the scriptures here. Luke chapter 19, verse 5 and 6, Jesus said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. Jesus told Zach, I must be a guest in your house today. I need to build a relationship with you now because I know you need to be needed and known. I know you need, I know you need relationship. You need connection. And how many of you can just think what Zacchaeus is thinking? He gets down at the tree and Jesus says, I need to be, come to your house now, today. Zacchaeus is like, man, I don't know you like that. <laughs> You want, to come, you want to come to my house? What? No, no, that wasn't what Zacchaeus said at all. He actually took Jesus to his house with great excitement. There you are, churches, are aggressive about building relationships with new people. Church family, it's so easy to turn inward. It's so easy just to talk to each other. We got to talk to each other less. And talk to new people more. It can't just be about us and our, our circle of friends. But we got to have our eyes on a swivel looking for the Zacchaeus and going after them and connecting with them. Aggressively talking to them. Every person needs a friend. They got to get connected to a friend. If they're going to stay in a church and go on a spiritual journey and give their life to Christ and be all God wants them to be. And every Sunday, you, you'll see it, my wife and I, we're in the hallway. And I'm not there just to talk to you. Matter of fact, when Tiffany and I are in the hallway, in the hallway, don't get offended. If I look right over your shoulder to somebody and, and wave and get somebody or, or say, hey, thank you, excuse me, I got to get out of here. I got to go on and get, because I'm looking for new people. I'm looking. I know this is somebody's first Sunday. I know somebody's hurting. I know somebody's broken. I know somebody's given God their last try this Sunday. And I'm looking for new people. I want to greet you. I want to say hi. But I'm looking for, for new people. I'll sick my wife on people. Maybe I think they're new. Go, 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 go talk to them. Well, I mean, it's a divide and conquer. But I can't do that by myself. You can't just be talking to each other in the hallway and leaving that job up to me. There are way too many people at all of our campuses. We got to have you looking for the Zacchaeus. And Jesus said, I'm coming after you. And we need you doing that. Lost people need you. New people need you. Everybody needs a friend and a job. Number five is this. Here's my last point. Number five. Every service Do not let anything distract you from reaching lost people. Every service, do not let anything distract you from reaching lost people. Luke chapter 9, verse number 7. Lean in, Midwest City. Lean in, Northwest. Lean in, Indiana. Come on, Oklahoma City. Lean in right now. Luke chapter 9 and verse 7. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be a guest of a notorious sinner. They grumbled. 
They're complaining about Jesus wanting to build a relationship with Zacchaeus to reach him. In Luke chapter 19 and verse 10, Jesus said, For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Jesus didn't get distracted by people. He stayed focused on reaching lost and hurting people, even though the crowd was grumbling, complaining, and moaning. And church, we can't get distracted from reaching lost people. I said it this morning. If you missed this morning, please get online and watch the service on YouTube. What, drive, when you're driving home, listen to it on the way home. Church, there's a heaven and there's a real hell. There's a real eternity and we can't get distracted from reaching lost people yes there's a virus and we need to protect ourselves and use all the wisdom that God has given us but we can't we can't forget that lost people need Jesus in this political climate of 2020 there's been so much division and and the racial unrest and cancel culture and sin running rampant in our world don't get distracted from reaching lost people People, heaven and hell hang in the balance. I'm asking all of our dream team to do two things. Here they go. All of our dream team to do two things. Number one is this. Would you serve on the dream team faithfully, Easter and beyond? Would you serve on the dream team faithfully, Easter and beyond? Some of you are serving faithfully at our campuses. Thank you. We literally can't reach people without you. Thank you Sunday after Sunday, Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, Wednesday after Wednesday. We count on you and you show up and lives are changed. We, if nobody's told you thank you for being faithful, hear it from your pastor. Thank you for being faithful every single week. Some of you serve sometimes. We need you. We need you in this season. People's hearts are open. Would you serve faithfully maybe you've been serving once a month would you serve weekly hey we get it you get sick you need a vacation that's great we got that's why we got to raise up a bench we got to get a pipeline we should always there's no success without a successor we should always be pouring into somebody else so that when we miss they can step up and take our place and we we, we want you to take vacation we, we understand those things but boy we need an army that serves faithfully to see more change lives some of you used to serve would you jump back in and start serving faithfully. You used to be so committed. We need you. The Lord needs you. This team needs you. Would you serve faithfully to help us see more changed lives? Some of you are here today at one of the campuses, and you've never served here at People's Church. Maybe you've never served at any church. I want to invite you tonight to join the dream team. We're going to have breakout sessions in just a moment. You pick the ministry you want to go to, and you let the leader there know I'm new and I want to join the dream team. And we're going to get you hooked up to make a difference Easter and beyond. Here's the second thing. So the first thing is serve on the dream team faithfully Easter and beyond. And number two, here's the second thing I need you to do. Invite people to church Easter and beyond. Pray and look for open doors Get those invite cards. If you didn't get them, get, get any this morning or you already gave them all out, they're, they're out there in the lobby at all the campuses. Get some more invite cards. Give them out. Give them out to grocery stores, to friends and family, to, to, to when you go through your drive through whatever, on queue or Starbucks or wherever you get your coffee or just different drinks, just hand them a card. Get on the social media package. I need you, Dream Team. You're my leaders. Would you lead the way? This week, I don't get on social media a lot, but if I get on Facebook, would you light it up? I need you to lighten up your Facebook page, light up your, your Instagram, light up your social media, get the graphics out, go to the app and the website and get those graphics and videos out there and say, come and see, come and see, come and see. Serve faithfully on the dream team because lives hang in the balance and invite people Easter and beyond. Here's what we're going to do at all of our campuses. We want to spend 20 or 30 minutes training you. We got this beautiful Dream Team t-shirt. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. The team did such a great job. Come on, get a close-up. Get a close-up. Get a close-up. Get a close-up. Oh, my, 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 my. Man, I got more muscles than I thought. I'm just playing. I am just playing. I am. We need you. We, listen, 
we want to get your size so that we can make sure we have the right size for you. So in your huddle, when we break out at all the campuses, you're going to be able to give us your size so that we can make sure next week we have your right size for the dream team as you serve next week. And then we're going to take 20 or 30 minutes and train you in your specific area on how you can effectively reach lost people. Church, I'll be so disappointed. Every campus, I'll be so disappointed if you throw these notes away. I'm, I've trained you. I, some of you had light bulb moments as I was you're like, wow, that was good. I didn't think about that. I'm not talking to people. I didn't know what to say. And I've equipped you. But it won't do any good if you go and put these away or throw them in the trash. Keep these notes and go over them and over them so that you can help us effectively reach lost people now and beyond. And we're going to help you Easter weekend in the breakout sessions. I'm turning it over to the campuses right after I pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for working and moving. God, we pray for our harvest on Easter for our friends, our, our family members, our co-workers, those at our schools, our neighbors to be saved. God, I pray that we would be a there you are church, not a here I am church. Bless Easter and beyond. And Lord, let us see many, many people give their life to Jesus Christ because of our serving. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.